I'd like to welcome you um, to the last section of this talk on intellectual property. Um, although, you know, the thing is about what's intellectual property, for example, I've mentioned different, different books, Robert Pinsky's Selected Poems, um, The Situation of Poetry by Robert Pinsky, A Little White Shadow by, um, by Mary Wolf, um, Robert Pinsky, The Sounds of Poetry, A Brief Guide, and The Penguin Books of Poets. Now, although Robert Pinsky and others are very creative, the most important thing that helps, that helps their creativity um, to help others is, is copyright, is intellectual property protection. For example, um, all these books are protected by copyright. Um, for example, in, the, in terms of the text, on uh, the artwork, as, as well as to the length of the copyright. U.S. copyright is 99 years after the death of the author. British copyright is about 50 years. Um, other, forms of, other forms of intellectual property protection uh, that are very important in the digital age are DRM, Digital Resource Management. For example, like if you publish an ebook, um, many ebooks have DRM basically through um, different vendors, as well as software. Although many people may argue that um, information wishes to be free, yes, of course, information wishes to be free. However, the people who develop that information need to be paid. Um, also, they, they need they need to may, be able to maintain a certain level of existence to keep developing and, and creating different types of information. If um, so, be, so what happens? DRM allows a certain period allows a certain period of time for people to get um, money that they need to keep to continue their work and to continue their development. Many creative people are very, are very much. Um, undercharge themselves compared to other people who are pirates that overcharge. Um, so basically, intellectual property protection is, is very important to know. Um, a good way to get started is I would recommend the NOLO books on intellectual property protection as they have different sample contracts and they explain it in easy to understand language um, the most important thing you can do when you start a project are two things. First, non-disclosure, non-compete, non-circumvent agreement, and that is in the NOLO books. Two, a contracting agreement, which basically explains if you work with an agent, how, what the agent's going to do for you, how you're going to get paid, specifically what the agent's commission is, for example, many people don't realize that, that certain states have maximum commission rates that they charge, for example, like New York and others, and people end up paying more commissions than they really should. Um, so what happens you on the non-compete, non, um, non non-circumvent agreement, as well as an agent agreement, are two important agreements to have in a project. The third thing to have is whenever you start a project, is 50% down. Although some people are, are will say, well, well, we'll pay you afterwards, or the friends that say, well, you know, you, well, you know, we've been friends for a long time. You can trust us. Well, you know, why get a buyer? I'll help you get a buyer. We'll pay you then. No, uh, insist on 50% down because if someone's not willing to put anything down on the project or, or not willing to put 50% down, they're not, they're not willing to pay for the project. They're, they're trying to get, they're trying to get something for nothing. And why should you put your time, money, and resources in um, to be deceived? It's one thing if you if you wish to if you wish to physically donate. If someone says, "Would you volunteer to do this?" and you and you know you know that it's a volunteer effort, fine. But if someone's going to veil something like this and say make off that they're going to pay in the future, no, fifty percent down. The thing is, you um, the NOLA books are very good on, on on understanding your intellectual property rights. If you're an author, if you're a business person, if you're a developer, 
Um, and another thing I'd recommend as well is Legal Shield. Um, Legal Shield um, answers a lot of questions for you. I'm a client of theirs. I've used them for many years. I wish I would have known of them sooner. But the biggest thing is if you have a question, um, well, uh, for example, many times you want to ask the attorney a question, it's a $750 retainer. With Legal Shield for $17 a month, if you have a question, you can have it resolved, and many times they can write a letter on your behalf to the person to get the issue resolved without even having to go to court. For someone who's who's a business person, developer, legal legal insurance is is something to do. I mean, um, like like one friend of mine mentioned, um, you know, some people say, well, why pay this much a month? Well, I mean, consider it this way, you know, for for the for the amount for the amount of time you may spend on the road to buy maybe a latte or something else, you know, three lattes can give you a peace of mind and also give you uh, protection that, that will allow you to have greater income and better quality of life. Because people who lack legal resources have a poor quality of life and a poor income. That's why it is important to understand how to protect your intellectual property, what you make, what you sell, your business and even even your identity um, and it's, it's worth it um, the NOLO books and legal shield perfect combination um, I'd like to thank you for listening to this presentation and please feel free to contact me at diana d-i-a-n-a -A dot kaneki k-a-n-e-c-k-i at yahoo.com again diana d-i-a-n-a -A dot kaneki k-a-n-e-c-k-a e-c-k-i at yahoo.com or on Twitter, Diana1A, or on um, um, Facebook, Diana.Kanehi, as well, and with Skype, uh, Diana1K1. Um, thank you again.